and welcome to the Googleplex. This is an incredible place with lots of great stuff being worked on every single day. Before I worked here, I always wondered what it would be like to come to the Googleplex, meet up with a Googler, and have coffee with them, and just chat about what they do, how they do it, and why they do it. And today we're going to do exactly that. So welcome to this episode of Coffee with a Googler. Today I'm meeting with Frances Campoy. He's a developer advocate on the Google Cloud Platform, and he specializes in the language called Go. So welcome, Frances. Thanks for joining us. Oh, thank you for having me. I'm very happy. It's an honor to be here. Oh, thank you so much. So Go, um, what, what, what's so special about Go? So Go is a programming language that was created uh, five years ago here at Google. Okay. And it was created with the main goal of solving Google problems. And the most important thing when you, the most important word that comes to mind when you think about Google is, of course, scale. scale. Right? There yes. you go. So uh, it's basically scale in three different axes of the same, uh, okay. same problems that we have. One of them is how many engineers or developers you have per project. Okay. And, and Google is pretty well known to have really, uh, a really big number of engineers. Right. If those engineers are using a programming language that doesn't help them uh, interact with each other, share code, uh, be able to read and understand what the other wrote, right. that's a big problem. I see. Okay. So, so Go concentrates a lot on keeping it really simple, uh, having a very good readability. So even if you might not have read a single line of Go code ever in your life, you might find a Go program and find it surprisingly familiar, actually. So it's not like C++ in that regard. <laughs> no, not exactly, yes. <laughs> That's actually uh, C++ is the language that we still use mostly for, for servers. Right. So Go was supposed to replace C++. Uh, okay. That didn't really happen yet. Uh, it actually surprisingly came. Uh, most people coming f to Go co are coming from other languages, like a Python and, and Ruby, because they like the simplicity of the language, basically. Cool, cool. A uh, second axis of scale for these problems is the, the number of cores we have in a single machine. Okay. Uh, nowadays, for instance, you can check on the Google Cloud Platform. We provide uh, instances that have 32 cores. Wow. Okay. If you have 32 cores and you are not able to use them correctly because your, prom your programming language doesn't support concurrency or mm -hmm. parallelism, you're wasting money, sure. basically. Sure. So, so it's really important. Concurrency is a, is a, a fundamental part of, of Go. Okay. And finally, the, the number of machines we're running. Uh, everything now is about the cloud. Right. The cloud is about running across a big fleet of machines. Mm -hmm. uh, you need to be able to communicate correctly between different machines. But this, we have been doing it at Google for, for ages, basically. Yeah. Yeah. So, DNA, right? yeah. so Go was created from the beginning, uh, keeping all of those aspects in mind. Yeah. Okay. Now, Go recently had a new release dropped, right? Was it 1.4? Yeah, that was 1.4, yeah. OK. Wh what's in this? So in Go 1.4, uh, there was not much new uh, from the point of view of features of the language. Okay. It was more about improving things. So okay. uh, one of the things that we improved was having a better garbage collector. Uh, okay. We keep on doing that every single time. Uh, that's one of the, the topics of research that, that we're actually working on very, very closely. Okay. And uh, then some small features. One of the small features that was not really uh, important at that point, but will become way more important on 1.5, is the support for Android. Android. Okay. Yes. Nice. We gave some basic support for Android. Uh, and with Go 1.5, the support for Android will be much more important. Yeah. Cool. So what kind of Android apps can you build with Go right now? So the idea is that we, want, we don't want to replace Java. Uh, sure. Java is the language of Android, and we're totally OK with that. Um, what we're trying to do is uh, replace all the languages that people have been using to, for instance, write games, okay. where basically you're not depending that much on the UI of Android. You're basically writing everything from scratch. Okay. Uh, your buttons don't need to look like Android buttons, for instance. Right. And in those cases, basically, what you need is uh, to be able to open uh, and close connections and, and files, and then basically write into the screen and play some music. Okay. And all of those are actually part not of the SDK of Android, but the NDK. Got it. And okay. that's what we're supporting. Uh, with Go 1.5, we'll give support for, okay. for, um, for Android the NDK only. And the, the good thing about this is that 
what we're doing is we, we created this Go Mobile thing. And Go Mobile is just a layer of abstraction between uh, your Go program and the Android behind. Okay. Now, the cool thing is that that Go Mobile layer of abstraction has been designed with, a, uh, it, with multiple platforms in mind. Cool. So we're also working on iOS. Cool. And very soon, we expect to be able to say, you can write your app just in Go and deploy it at the same time, both on the, on the Apple Store and on the Play Store by Google. Nice, yeah. nice. Cool. Pretty excited about that. Yeah. Now you said that's a lot of that's coming in 1.5. Yes. That's uh, by now we're able to run things on Android. Uh, mm -hmm. That has been actually the case for a little bit because uh, Go compiles in a in a lot of platforms. ARM is one of those, so you right. would be able to run it. But uh, the possibility of contacting uh, of using the NDK and being able to use OpenGL and these kind of things on Android uh, cool. that will come with Go 1.5. Cool. So it runs on Android, and you mentioned earlier on that it runs in the cloud. But the cloud is so diverse; there <laughs> must be lots of great scenarios. Like, where else is Go making good stuff happen? Yeah. So there's actually so many new projects uh, that are using Go. Uh, one of the ones that everybody is talking about is Docker. Okay. Everybody knows about so Docker. Docker uses Go. Yes. Nobody oh. knows that Docker is running Go, but it is. Yeah. It is. It is running Go. There's also uh, all the things like Kubernetes. Mm -hmm. uh, Kubernetes is also running Go. Uh, so Kubernetes is basically like the open source version of how Google manages data centers. Right. Um, and there's so many other more. Uh, CoreOS, for instance, a new uh, Linux distribution, they also use Go. And I think that the main reason for this is that because on the cloud, you need two things. One is you need to use very well your machines. Okay. So concurrency is important. Right. And then again, you need to use the, the network very well. So the networking package that we have at Google uh, works really well. Okay. So it's a little bit of both. And then the last thing that I think is very important is that we provide uh, multi-platform uh, compila compilation and also cross-platform, which means that okay. I can compile uh, an XE binary for Windows from my Linux machine. Wow. And cool. yeah, basically it allows you to to right. to work in whatever environment you want, and then deploy it to the cloud, whatever nice. cloud you're using, which nice. is a great thing. Yes. Yeah, that's pretty cool. So, yep. so like if a developer wants to get started with this, there's so much diversity there, right? So, if developer wants to start programming and go so that they can reach that diversity, how how would you recommend they get started? Well, I think that the the most important web page to remember is golang.org, okay. which is the Go homepage, and then from there you're gonna find a variety of uh, of resources, documentation, tutorials, and so on. And there's a specific tutorial that it's it's really important. It's very successful. It's a Go tour. Go tour. The Go tour. So okay. that's in tour.golang.org. Tour.golang.org. Yes. Okay. I have to and remember that one. Yeah. <laughs> and that allows you to to learn Go without having to install anything. So cool. basically, you get to a web page, and you're gonna be able to see some instruction aside, some Go code on the other side that you can edit and run and just play with the language and understand the basics without having to install anything on your computer. That's yes. pretty cool. Great way to learn. Yeah, that's. I think <laughs> that's the best way to learn without having to, to engage into anything. You just go there, try it. If you like it, that's awesome. If you don't like it, well, let us know. <laughs> OK, sure, and how we can improve it. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> so, well, thank you so much, Francesc. And thank you for watching this episode of Coffee with a Googler. I've learned so much about Go, and I hope you have too. So if you want to learn more about Google and about Go, subscribe to the Google Developers YouTube channel, where we've got lots of great videos. And if you have any questions for me or any questions for Francesc, just please leave them in the comments below. Thanks for watching.